Let's begin. The next talk is about the pair network namespace RTNL, breaking up our biggest lock. Take it away. Thank you. Okay, let's get it started. Hi everyone, I'm Kunyuki, working for AWS. And today I'm going to talk about classic topic, that is RTNL. So this is the agenda. First, I will walk you through what is RT Netlink and what is RTNL and then introduce some recent updates for RTNL. And finally, I will explain an issue that we are facing on and a possible solution that requires a large set of changes. So let's move on to the first section. RT Netlink is a kind of Netlink family and stands for Routing Table Netlink. And we can use it via a Netlink socket created with protocol Netlink root and communicate between various subsystems, including network interfaces, IPv4, IPv6 addresses, routes, neighbor entries, blah, blah, blah. So most major network resources can be configured by RT Netlink. And in the Netlink message, the green field and pink one, and in the message type and RT gen family, that is the first byte of the message data, are uh, used to determine which subsystem to communicate with. And also the orange field and the message flag is used to determine which function to invoke to process the RT Netlink message. So RT gen family is a protocol family like PF unspec and PF inet or something like that. And the message type consists of four types of message type, uh, LTM new something, del something, get something, and set something. And LM, NL message flags, uh, this is one, NLMF request, arc dump create. So for example, if you want to create a network interface, the LT gen family is BF unspec, and NL message type is LTM new link, and NLMF request and create flag are used. And if you want to dump IPv6 addresses, the protocol family is PF inet 6, and the LTM message type is LTM get address, and NLMF dump flag is used. And the JIS messages are processed by message handlers registered by each subsystem that calls LTN register or LTN register module. And the function accepts two function pointers, do it and dump it. Dump it is called for dump request and whose message type is LTM get something and NL message frog has NLM F dump and do it is called for other messages. The functions are start in an array of stacked RTNL link that is RTNL message handlers and indexed by protocol and message type. So when we send a netlink, RT netlink message, the NL message type and the RT gen family are used to fetch the corresponding RTNL link struct. And then the do it function stored in the RTNL link struct is called. And the notable thing here is the do it is called on the RTNL lock. This is so-called RTNL. So RTNL is a big kind of lock for the networking slow pass that is a global mutex. And it serialized all of the RTNL link requests, but the situation has been improved since 414. The last argument of RTNL register, the flags, was added in 414 to control how each handler is called. The flag is also stored in the RTNL message handlers with do it and dump it functions. And the first flag I did in 4.14 is LTN flag do it unlocked. So you can guess from the name, if the do it is registered with this flag, the do it function will be called without LTNL. So by using this flag, we can push LTN down to do it or convert to do it to use LCU. <clears throat> so if uh, the do it is registered with the flag. In LT netlink receive message, before taking LTNL, there is a similar code, but that is executed on the LCU. So 
this time I'll see read lock is acquired and alternate link struct is fetched on the LCU. And if the struct has the flag do it unlocked, then the do it is stored in the local variable do it. And LC is released, and then do it is called. <clears throat> so since the flag was added during 4.14, few do it functions has been converted and as of 6.11 we can run starting do it functions without LTNL. So the next section listens updates for LTNL. So this year two notable changes were modeled to lower the LTNL pressure and the voice works were done by Elik from Google. The first one is LTN frag dump unlocked that is added in 6.9 and that is similar to do it unlocked. So if do it, uh, <clears throat> if dump it function is registered with this flag, the dump it will be called without LTNL. So we can use this flag to convert dump it to LCU. And as of 6.11, 15 functions has been converted to LCU. And another improvement is exit patch LTNL. This is also added in 6.9. So <clears throat> the exit patch LTNL is a new method of struct Parnet operations. The method is called when network namespaces are destructed by a single thread work. The first argument is the list of dying namespace, network namespaces, and the second one is the important one. So to explain the second argument. Let's see how network interface is removed. So when we remove network interfaces, we need to run these steps. One, two, four. So first acquire LTNL and queue network interfaces to a linked list and pass the list to unregistered netbytes many and then release LTNL. So here unregistered netbytes many calls flush all backlogs and synchronize net and both of the function have some latency. For example, flush all backlogs, iterates all the CPU and checks the softnet data and check if there is SKB that is tied to a dying network interface. And then if there is such SKB, we need to flee the SKB. So it takes some time. <clears throat> and also LTN unlock does not just release, the <clears throat> sorry, so LTN unlock does not just release the mutex. It also waits until each network interface's left count to drop to one. So this also adds some latency. <coughs> and, <coughs> and this network interface removal was common in exit batch method of some module like bonding, bleach, Geneve, IPIP, GLE, and more. And this is because when a module is unloaded, all network interfaces created by the module need to be also removed. And this method is basically called for alive network namespaces, but it's also used for network namespace dismantle. So then we call exit batch LTNL, uh, exit batch of such module and repeated acquire LTNL, release LTNL, and late, add latency by on the just standard by many. And this was improved by the exit batch LTNL. So exit batch LTNL factorize out LTNL and also on the just standard by many. And now each module just need to Queue the dying network, network interfaces to the list, pass it to the exit batch LTNL. And then such network interfaces are removed in the batch. So this way, exit batch LTNL expedites NetNS dismantle by reducing LTNL lockdowns and removing network interfaces in the batch. Okay, the last section, PanetNS LTNL. So currently, there is 131 LT Netlink message handlers, and uh, there is still 104 handlers are executed on the LTNL, and 75 is do it and 29 is dump it. 
So if you create some resources, it will be most likely serialized by LTNL. And taking a closer look at the converted dump it function since 6.9, now we can dump IP address, root, and IP routing table loop, and also neighbor entities. So most basic network resources can be now dumped without the LTNL. So this is very nice, but if we look at the do it, the most of the message type of converted do it is LTM gets something. So there are only five LTM new or Dell something functions that actually <coughs> creates or remove some resources. <clears throat> and in our case, we create 2,000 network namespaces and a small number of network interfaces in each network namespace. So we issue so many LTM new something requests, and this is done concurrently for each network namespace. But most of them are serialized in kernel. So just setting up a single host takes 10 minutes or longer. So if we want to deploy a new host to a production environment, then we need to wait at least 10 minutes. And this is a huge pain for us. So we want to do more granular working for LTNL. So that's the uh, idea of the uh, background of Panet and LTNL. <coughs> Sorry. So the idea is very simple. So we want to replace the big LTNL with a small LTNL mutex to freeze a single net network namespace uh, instead of freezing all of the network namespaces. <clears throat> but we need to know how big LTNL is. So it's serialized most lighter side of LTNL network request now, and also similar UAPI like Ion Control or CCFS are also serialized. But this is not the only code that are locked by LTNL. So I grabbed the LTNL lock. Anyone can guess the number. So how many LTNL scope in the Linux kernel? 10,000. 10,000. 10, oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Stop that. There are 8,000. So, and 3,000 LTN scope are under the net directly, and 500 are under the driver directly. And also, there are 500 users of our LTNL that guarantees the code is uh, in the place the LTNL is held. And also, LTN deliverance is a similar helper and there is 600 users. And just scraping LTNL, there is 5,000. So 5,000 traces are related to LTNL. So we need to replace over 800 of LTNL instances. But of course, it's impossible to replace all of them at once. So we need to gradually convert all of the LTNL scopes. And also another question would be, how many NetNS need to be frozen at the same time for each path? So for the first question, how to replace LTNL? So this is a plan to replace LTNL gradually. For, so first, for all LTNL scopes, we need to replace LTNL lock with LTNL net lock. <coughs> and it, and then replace LTNL helpers with Panet and its corresponding alternatives. And then now I place LTNL lock inside the LTNL net lock, and then also added a config guard for the small LTNL mutex, not to slow down the uh, each pass during the LTNL net conversion. And once the conversion completes, then we can remove all of the LTNL, uh, uh, then we can remove LTNL lock in the LTN net lock, and also we can remove the config guard. So the left code before combustion will look like the light one during combustion. 
So each co each corresponding helper accepts the NetNS as the first argument. But there is no functional change unless someone enables the debug config. Okay, then let's think how to convert the do it function. So first I added new flags, that is uh, alias of the do it unlocked. So to indicate the do it is converted or under conversion. And we will use the, this flag to push out in a down to do it. <clears throat> and most do it functions operate on a single network namespace. So we can combat it by adding a log for global data that is protected by LTNL or namespace finder resource and moving message validation forward and then add LTNL flag do it panet flag and push down LTNL, LTNL as LTN netlock and then we can replace the LTNL helpers. So for example, LTM new address, this is the interface to manage IPv4 address on the network interfaces. So the IPv4 address is linked to a global hash table. So we need to namespace by the hash table. And IPv6.1 is already namespace wide. So I mean, the, each network namespace has the hash table for IPv6 address, but IPv4 is not. So we need to namespace by it and also the hash table is used for garbage correction. So we need to name space for the garbage correction too. And then we can place out in a net block and push out in a down. And there is some do it operated on multiple network namespace that is LTM new link, the link and set link. So then we need to freeze multiple network namespace. So we need to Define create locking order to avoid ABP at that block. So listen to we can define the locking order as a function by lock set comp function. And at this time I implemented it as LTN and net comp locks. This can be used for least later for other helper functions. So the loop is the first init net is locked and then other network name spaces will be locked in the address of single order. So this is because when destroying network name spaces in default device exit patch, we need to iterate dying network name space and move some physical devices into initial network name space. So the first loop would be useful in this case. And there's some other code Locks lock in the same order. And then I implemented helper functions to fleece multiple network namespace easily. The LTNL nets stores multiple network namespace in an alley, and also it has the number of network namespaces. And LTNL nets lock freezes nets from uh, network namespaces from index zero to length minus one. And here's an example to explain how to use such helpers. So LTNL nets init initialize the struct, and then LTNL nets add accept the LTNL nets struct and also network namespaces with its reference count bumped. And then LTNL nets lock freezes the network namespaces from index zero to the length one, and unlock do the unlocks and destroy calls put net. And in the LTNL nets app, we sort network namespaces in the alley so that LTNL nets lock can lock the network namespaces from index zero. Okay, so now the helper is ready, so we can think about how to combat LTM net link, uh, LTM new link. So there are four attributes that express the network namespace. So for example, if if LA link net NS ID is specified, the device is created in a network namespace that is the current network namespace or specified by PID, FD, or net NS ID. And then 
new link is called to the called for the current network namespace. For, so in this case, we need to freeze two network namespace. And if LA link net NS ID is specified, then the device is created in the network namespace that is specified by link net NS ID. And also new link is called for the same network namespace. And finally, the device is moved to another network namespace. So in this case, we also need to freeze two network namespaces. And there is some devices that create a peer device. So VS, VXCAN, and NetKit create a net, another network uh, interface. And that could be in another, yet another network namespace. So finally, we need to freeze three network namespaces. So for the first two network namespace, that can be obtained from the LT net link message. We need to prefetch the network namespace before LT and the net lock. So we need to move the message validation forward before LT and the net lock. And for the peer network namespace, we also need to take the network namespace before LT and net lock. And also the network namespace can be fetched based on the device type. So we need a new ops method to fetch a net peer network namespace. And also the ops is currently protected by LTNL. So we need to guarantee ops alive without LTNL. And in this case, this can be protected by SLCU as feedback from ELIC. And finally, we can release SLCU. And also when Unlogistling, uh, unloading the VS or uh, when unloading a module, then we need to wait for the in-flight LTM new link to complete, and this can be done with synchronized SLCU. So to convert LTM new link, we can move message validation forward and then protect link offs with SLCU, and then finally add LTM frag do it par net and push LTM down as LTM net, LTM net lock. And LTN dead link, this link moves a network interface in either of the current network namespace or target NetNS ID. And what if the device has peer or child devices? For example, VS, VXCAN, NetKit, or Mac VLAN, IP VLAN. So does prefetching NetNS in LTN dead link work? And the answer would be no. <clears throat> For example, Mac VLAN has this code, and if we remove a lower device, then the upper Mac VLAN device will be removed too, and the upper device could be in different network namespaces. And here we don't know how many network namespaces will be touched, and also the path is in the NetDev notifier, so we can't add another LT net lock that could be result in a dead lock. So to resolve the issue, we need to do par NetNS device on legislation, like queue network interfaces to a par NetNS list, and then trigger par NetNS on legislation work. So the work will look like this. It snapshot the dying network interfaces and do the on legislation. However, this change requires the work of LTN unlock. And so this change must be done at the final stage of the combustion. I mean, this can be done only when LTNL unlock can be removed. So until then, we need to implement a glue code, like managing NetNS lists that has dying net device queued and collecting the device from the list in unregistered net device many notify. So when we convert LTN the link, we can queue dying network interfaces to par NetNS list and splice the list in on the unregistered net device many notify and remove key list from ops del link and exit patch LTNL, then push out in a down result in net lock. But this change will reintroduce the latency that was removed by exit patch LTNL. So this option might be no go. And we need to explore another solution to batching Panet NS on legislation or something like answer one. And the last LTM set link, this basically operates on the current network namespace, but 
it could move a new, uh, it could move a network interface to another network namespace specified by PID, FD, or NetNSID. And here the same question, what if the device has peer or child devices? <clears throat> the possible solution for that issue would be like this. Look at the network interface and the LCU, fetch all network namespace by yet another method and release LCU and hold out in netlock and then look up a network interface again. <clears throat> but another peer or child device could be added just before the second lookup. So then we need to probably, we need to look up again and that would be a really ugly solution. So we need to explore another option to avoid Altium Netslock for peer child devices in the Altium set link. So currently we have some challenges to combat Altium del link and set link, but except for that, the most of Altium L users can be combated relatively easily because most of them uses just a single network namespace. So I'm planning to post this change upstream and proceed conversion under the config guard. And I hope I find a better solution for set link and the link soon and complete the conversion hopefully next year. But yeah, that would be, that will require community help. So if you find LTNL lock in your code that you are working on, then please try to convert the LTNL lock to the LTN net lock. Yeah, that's all. Thank you for listening. Um, can you go back to slide 46? 46, okay. This? No, 46. Ah, 46, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah that, that part I don't really understand what's going on. So, isn't it adding um, a contention on initnet, uh, rtnet link? Yes, exactly. Oh. <coughs> And then there is another question. Some CSFS um, entry just start to grab the RTNL with the RTNL trilog, and then eventually later are going to maybe call this function. So I'm wondering. Oh, okay. Uh, for example, devsim, net devsim, I think uh, mm. can create and delete net device from CSFS, mm. which is kind of horrible. Exactly. So that's. Okay, I need to think of solution. <laughs> Maybe we should first start from removing from uh, NetDevSim the ability to create and delete uh, <laughs> net device from CSFS because that's not, I don't understand why it's done this way. <clears throat> that was, by, the Jerry wanted to do that because like he wanted to create the, um, basically use the bus, like normal devices probe through the driver model, and that was the way to basically probe the net seems through driver model. But we can do a uh, asynchronous work or something like that. That should be fine, because mm -hmm. net are supposed to pop up asynchronously anyway. So that might work. But net is like we can do whatever we want with it. I think we should focus on other things. Other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you.